Hi, now the lecture on IPv6 packet. Now, there are definitely some limitations. The question is, why would I want to have an IPv4, uh, you know, IPv6 protocol altogether? Well, IPv4 is still in use today, but it's eventually, IPv6 is eventually going to replace IPv4. And the reason you need to understand why is some, we got to talk about some of the limitations of IPv6 or IPv4 and of course some of the advantages of IPv6. Now IPv4 address uh, the number of available public addresses has been it was limited to about 4 billion and they have all been used assigned to outside devices. So that caused some problems when we start thinking they're going to run out of addresses. They created a network address translation, which allowed me to take uh, addresses from a, uh, a private network uh, like the college and only assign publicly routable addresses, IPv4 addresses, when it was going to leave the network. If it stayed inside the campus's network, it could still use the uh, private addresses. Uh, and then when it has to hit the router, then it has to change it to a public address. And this changing from private to public is what the network address translation protocol does. Um, so this net gives me, it ex definitely extended the life of IPv4. Um, of course, it was only meant it was only meant to be as a transition a transition piece, but um, because it's been implemented working so well, um, it's it's kind of hung around a little bit longer. Now, having this you know network address translation does sometimes cause troubleshooting of addresses a little bit more complicated, only because you're trying to figure out is it an internal is it an external address, um, so. Those are some of the major reasons why IPv6 was developed. Now, back in the early 90s, uh, the you know Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, because they were concerned with this uh, IPv4 being you know running out of space, they actually says I need to come up with something different. Well, they came up with IPv6, and some of the major improvements were increased address size. Instead of having a 32-bit address, now it's a 128-bit address. So it is a larger address, allows for more uh, addresses. Uh, you know, they got a number down the floor from a little over 4 billion to, you know, some 340 unidecillion addresses. Uh, Okay, there's a we got an IP address for every grain of, grain of sand on the United States or on the Earth, um, so uh, we have plenty of addresses. If you look at the the basic size here, uh, one billion is ten to the ninth. We've got four billion. Well, we now have ten to the thirty six. So you have a lot more addresses <laughs> to come into play. Um, now, when you start looking at uh, IPv4 header fields in an IPv6 header, um, one of the major design improvements was to simplify the um, IPv6 header. Um, so, you know, look, we've talked about the IPv4 address, all this good stuff, but now when you look at the IPv6 header, it, it is very simple. Uh, it is version, traffic class, a little bit of flow information. How big a packet am I, you know, am I sending? Uh, you know, a little bit of who's the next person in line and how long, you know, how many times can I move between different devices? Uh, so uh, definitely a different inf information. So as we look at the different fields, you got the version number. Uh, the version says, okay, it's the same in the IPv4, but remember, 
uh, what that different. Now this one is a four bit field. It's zero one one zero. That's the IP version. Traffic class is an eight bit field. That's equivalent to the differential services thing. The flow label is a 20 bit field that suggests that all packets with the same flow receive the same type of handling by routers. So it just kind of says, hey, these are all similar data, so we can move along the same same speed, same processing. The next header basically, so, oh, sorry, I missed the payload length. The payload length is a 16-bit field that says, hey, it's the length of the data portion, not the header, but the, the data portion or the payload of the packet does not include any of the header information. The next header is an 8-bit field, which is a kind of equivalent to the IPv4 protocol field, but indicates the data payload type that the packet is carrying. So it just kind of gives everybody a little rough idea as to what's coming. Uh, the hop limit, limit is a 8-bit uh, field that replaces the TTL, the IPv4, IPv4 TTL field. So this is how long will this packet stay alive? And then you've got the source and destination IPv6 address both of them being 128-bit fields. Uh, so some similarities, but, you know, <laughs> some things benefits. Uh, now we luckily know that unlike IPv4, routers do not fragment routed IPv6 packets. So you don't break them up. Uh, now you're gonna wanna take a look at the video on And on YPv6 headers in Wireshark, so you can at least see them. Uh, and then, of course, go ahead and check how much you remember on the processing of this. So what I'm going to do is go on to our introduction to how to host a route, or at least how a host routes, how your how does your, your PC route a packet. So hang on tight. <laughs> 